Hey there, Jacob with Resonate Recordings here. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a remote recording software called Squadcast. We're gonna do a tutorial on how to use it, how to set up your account, and we're also gonna look at their features and give our thoughts on their platform overall. So let's dive in. So whenever it comes to remote recording, Squadcast really does it right. Um, they have a great platform, innovative. They've built a ton of new features that I really have enjoyed. And that's a question that we're often asked working with a ton of podcasters is what's the best way to record high quality remote recordings? We've done a, a feature and a review on Zencaster in the past. Zencaster is a good platform, but Squadcast has very quickly kind of taken over with their new features. And I think there are a lot of advantages that Squadcast actually now has over Zencaster. So Squadcast, to access that, you go to squadcast.fm. Uh, you'll come to this page right here and you see that you can sign up for a free seven day trial. You are required to put in a credit card, but then you can select the appropriate plan for yourself depending on how many hours you think you're gonna be recording a month. They have a, a plan that's right for you. If you wanna sign up and pay yearly, you can do that and get a little bit of a discount there. But really great, you know, low entry, only $10, you can get started with the plan. Um, so once you select your plan, put in your credit card information, you'll be able to get signed up. And then uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get an email from Zach, their CEO, uh, that has a lot of great resources in it. One thing that I found very helpful was this connect and record checklist um, that has a lot of recommendations on getting started and recording with Squadcast. Uh, so we're going to kind of cover our own connect and record checklist. Feel free to use that one. But just a couple essentials that we recommend whenever using Squadcast is having a USB microphone or a microphone of your own that's a dedicated microphone. It can be an XLR microphone that's plugged into an audio interface or a simple USB microphone like the one you see here, which is the Samson Q2U, very affordable USB microphone. The second thing that's really important is having a pair of headphones. That's why you don't have any echo coming back into your microphone from your computer speakers or anything like that. Even though Squadcast does have a feature called echo cancellation, uh, I would recommend using headphones and, and doing that. Another optional piece of equipment is a pop filter. You can add that in and that's going to help decrease some plosives or hard sounds like that, P and pops, or you can kind of angle your mic to a 45 degree angle and that's going to kind of help eliminate or prevent those pops and plosives and stuff like that. So once you have everything plugged in, you're gonna go ahead and log in, click log in right there, and then you're gonna be taken to your dashboard. So in the dashboard, you'll see here a couple different things. The first thing is a new session. This is what where you would create a new session, put the date, you can schedule a session in advance. If you need to have an upcoming session, you can schedule a start time, your time zone, and then you can add in your guest email, and then you can send that link to your guest even for a future session, and then they'll join that. Once you create that session here, it's gonna show up over here in your sessions panels. This is also your past sessions that you've had. One cool thing that they set up for you is reusable session. This is a session with the same link. So if you had someone that was scheduling interviews with you through like Calendly or something like that, you could drop that link in your Calendly invite or in your Google Calendar, and then your new guest each week would just use that same session and that same link to access that. The only problem I could see with that is like if, you know, you had two guests joining at the same time that you didn't mean to or something like that. So if possible, I'd recommend create a new session for each guest and that'll help you keep track of it over here if you need to access those later down the road. They also create a practice session for you. And I noticed that they offer to have one of their support team members actually join a practice session with you. So one thing you will notice about Squadcast is their support is next to none. They really value support, being available, helping out their clients and anybody using their software. And so for uh, support, Squadcast really knocks it out of the park. The last thing you'll see on the dashboard is down here, your podcast. You have the option to add in your RSS feed. And that doesn't import anything or do anything special other than just put in your artwork and your information about your podcast more for a branding perspective to really feel like this is my dashboard. Uh, so Culpable is a podcast that I was a producer on last summer that hit number one in Apple. So since I was an executive producer, I went ahead and put in our feed there and you can put that feed in and then hit save and you'll be good there. So the other thing is up here, you can click on this little icon and you'll see you can click on the dashboard, take you back there. You can toggle on and off light mode and dark mode. 
Uh, I think I'm going to prefer dark mode for this one. Pretty cool. As I said, Squadcast support is amazing. They have uh, support docs that you can access, a lot of really helpful getting started guides, stuff like that, a lot of videos as well that, that the team's put together. You can click get help and you'll be able to access their support team. I think you can chat with them as they're available. Again, they're very helpful with that. If you sign up to be an affiliate to refer people to Squadcast, you can access that there and then you can log out and then you see your account settings there. I signed up for the seven day trial two days ago, even though I went ahead and signed up for an account. So I have five days left in my trial. So that's that. So once you're ready for your session, you will go ahead and put in your session name. So we're going to do test session with Caleb. It's going to default to the date. Like I said, if you were going to do it in the future date, you can select a future time date and time, select your time. Otherwise it'll default to now. You can change your time zone and then you can add in your guest email here. So I'm going to go ahead and add in Caleb and then you can add another guest, another guest up to three. So up to three guests, four people total in a session and you can add those in and then send that via email. You'll also be given the option to just copy the link and invite them not through email if you want. So once you're ready for that, you'll hit save session. You'll see that session was successfully saved and it's gonna show up over here. So you see the test session with Caleb right there. We're gonna go ahead and do that drop down. We can copy that invite link. We can edit the session or we can delete it. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that invite link and then I'm gonna go ahead and join that. And then I'm gonna send Caleb that link for our session. And while we're waiting for him to join, I'm gonna walk you through the green room. So once you join a session, you're gonna see this, the green room, it'll prompt you to put in your name up there. That's gonna to default to your email address you have set up. So we'll just change that to my name. This is your microphone. So you'll make sure you change your microphone to the correct one. It's defaulting to my MacBook Pro mic, which we would not want to use. We're not going to get a good sound from that. So again, I'm using the Samsung Q2U. We're going to change that. The next thing is headphones. So it's defaulting to my audio interface, which is a universal audio Thunderbolt input. We are going to change that again to the Samsung Q2U. I have my headphones plugged into the back of this microphone. So we're going to change that so I can hear myself and hear my guest. And then the last thing is if you had a, a webcam, you can change that. It's gonna default to my MacBook Pro FaceTime HD. And then another feature that I mentioned earlier is the echo cancellation. So if you didn't have headphones and you had to listen back to your guests through your computer speakers, you definitely wanna keep that on. What Squadcast will do is they'll try to cancel out any of the echo that's picked back up into the microphone. Again, it's preferred to always wear headphones. So hopefully you don't have to utilize this feature. And I'm gonna turn it off for mine because I know I have headphones, I'm in a quiet environment. Um, but if you didn't have a pair of headphones or in a noisy environment, I would recommend leaving that on. The next thing you'll see is uh, my location. So you do have to grant it access to your location the first time you use it. You can see that and manage that here. And then also you wanna grant it access to your microphone and camera, which I've already done, but you can update that here in Google Chrome by clicking on that camera, clicking on the location there. So you see the date and time, Again, you can click help to get access to their support team. And then we can click on join session. Before we do that, one thing I really like about Squadcast is they record backups of all the sessions. So from the time you join the session, they're actually recording a backup of your session. That's really nice. I know in school, I went to school for audio engineering down in Tennessee. And one of the things my professors always said was have a backup of your backup uh, because you never know whenever a hard drive might crash or an external drive may crash. So I really like that they have a backup. One other thing I'm doing is I'm gonna record a backup of my own. Uh, using our recorder. You can see I'm already recording using our Resonate recorder, which is just a free online recorder that records locally similar to Squadcast. So if you want to use that as well, you can record a backup at recorder.resonaterecordings.com or you can access that by going to resonaterecordings.com and then click on the record button. And we'll post uh, the audio from the Resonate recorder, the RAW, and then from Squadcast as well, just so you can kind of compare. My guess is it's going to be very similar. We did a similar test with Zencaster and Zoom, and the Resonate recorder significantly outperformed Zoom, sounded significantly better. And Squadcast, it sounded better, but it was, it was very minimal. So yeah, once you do all that, uh, the other thing to notice is the VU meter over here. So you want to make sure that you're not too close to your mic and distorting it like that. You want to make sure that it's staying in the yellow area yeah, generally, and you'll you'll definitely be able to see that and monitor that. General rule of thumb is stay about a fist distance away from your microphone. You can get a little bit closer if you speak softer 
or if you speak really loud, you might have to back up just a little bit. But generally speaking, about three to five inches is a good uh, distance from your microphone. So once we're ready to go, have our headphones, microphone, we're going to hit join session and we're going to be taken into our Squadcast session. So the first thing you'll see is it pops up the guest invite link because it knows we don't have a guest yet. So we're going to copy that and then we're going to send that over to our guest, which I've already sent. But if you needed to send it again, you can. Once we start recording, you'll see your recordings here. One cool feature as well is it's going to upload your recordings while you're recording rather than waiting until you're completely done. That's a really nice feature. That way your guests don't have to stick around and wait for a really long time for the entire file to upload. Once you're done, it's actually uploading while you're recording simultaneously. So there you would click to get the invite link. You see the same area up here that you had in the in the green room and in the dashboard. Um, so if we needed to change any of those settings, we could do that there. Right here, you can access all of your original settings that we saw in the green room. Echo cancellation, we decided we want to change that. We could do that there. It's going to refresh. So change that. It'll show your, your internet connection, which is kind of a cool feature. Mine's very bad right now, probably because I'm on Wi-Fi and not hardwired, I would guess. There's the refresh. So that's interesting. If you do echo cancellation, you have to rejoin the session or if you change that. And then you'll see your location. So this is a nice feature because you can see all this information about your guest. Oh, my network got better. So average. <laughs> so you can see all that. So if your guest has something selected wrong, you might just want to double check that for them. You can toggle on and off your microphone there. You can toggle off your camera and then you'll see your general location. Uh, we are in Louisville, Kentucky. That's the city you see there. We'll turn the camera back on so you can see me. And yeah, that's it. So now we're ready to record. We're just going to wait for our guests to join and then we'll get started. Hey, Caleb, how's it going? Great. How are you? Doing good. Can you hear me? I can hear you great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for joining in on our Squadcast tutorial. Um, so sure. I'm curious from your side, what did you see after I sent you the link and you clicked on it? Uh, yeah, it took me right to basically a real short sign up form where I just typed in my name and then it allowed me to choose my microphone input, my camera input. They called it a green room. So I wasn't on video until I filled out those things. So Nice. Very cool. Yeah. And as you can see, Caleb's using a USB microphone and headphones just like I am. Caleb's got the Audio-Technica AT2005, which is also a a great USB microphone. Um, so one of the cool features is on my end, you can see that I can see Caleb's um, different settings, his good network, his location uh, that he's using at HD Pro Webcam C920 and his headphones. So he turned off his video and you saw his location there, which is pretty cool. So once all your guests have recorded, um, you're going to see, or the, the host is only going to see the record button. So I'll go ahead and hit that and it will start recording. Um, and as I mentioned, you will see that it simultaneously is going to upload the audio files that you see right there uh, while we're recording. That way, Caleb doesn't have to hang out for a long time and wait for that file to upload after the fact. Um, so, yeah, Caleb, how's it going today? It's going great. Going awesome. Little, little cloudy, but it's good. Nice. Very cool. So you have your interview. Uh, once you are done with your interview, you simply hit stop and you see that they're gonna finish uploading the files there and then it successfully generates those and then that's good to go. So yeah, Caleb, um, you can actually hang up now. I have your files it looks like. Um, so if you wanna click the hang up or the phone button in the top right hand corner, you can go ahead and do that okay. now. Thanks again for joining, Sounds man. Good. Yep, see ya. See ya. So again, once Caleb leaves, uh, you'll hear that noise and then you can uh, access our files here, the recording files, and that's your, your separate tracks. Uh, so you can download those, delete recordings, copy a link to share them or anything like that. So once we're done with the recording, we're going to go ahead and uh, hit the hang up button as well. We're going to rate the session. That was an excellent session. And then it's going to take us back to our dashboard and then your sessions will show up. Um, so then we'll click back on that session. Uh, one of the cool features, you'll see the, the files here. You can preview them. You can download them. Uh, and then you can also hit mix recordings and it will merge the two separate tracks together into one listenable track. For post-production purposes, we don't recommend that. But if you're using that to just listen to the recordings, you can certainly do that. 
Before we go, I'd like to just give my final thoughts of Squadcast and talk through some of the features. Overall, I think Squadcast is a great platform, probably one of the best remote recording options at this point in time. I really like that they have full screen video. You can see your guest. You can catch that energy. You can see those nonverbal cues while you're recording. Unfortunately, at this point in time, you cannot record that video, uh, but they have said that that is a feature that they will be adding soon. So I'm excited to see that and I'm eagerly awaiting for that. If you need to record video, I would recommend you record using Zoom or QuickTime locally. We actually have a tutorial on how to record videos using Zoom on our website. So check that out and we'll link it below. Another thing that I really like is they have support for more browsers. They actually rolled out mobile support, but right now it's only available for Android. Unfortunately, a lot of us Apple users uh, don't have an option to record mobily using uh, Squadcast right now. Uh, they have said that that's a feature that they're working on and something that will also be coming out in the future. So I'm excited for that as well. If you need to record mobily using an Apple phone, I might suggest trying using recording phone calls. Um, we actually have a video that we'll link below on how to record phone calls uh, directly into like an interface or an audio recorder like a Zoom H6 and also how to record phone calls using Skype as well. So you can definitely check that out. Another thing that I really liked is that the audio is uploading progressively behind the scenes at while you're recording. Uh, that's really nice for your guests. That way they don't have to sit around and wait for the entire file to upload after you're done. So I think that's a really, really nice feature. Another thing I really like is that they record your ba uh, a backup of your audio. That's really nice as well. And that gives me a level of confidence that if my browser crashes or my computer crashes, that they'll be able to recover that. A lot of times, you know, if you're recording and you lose your recording, you have a, the best interview you ever did, and then you lose it, right? That's the worst nightmare for anyone. So thankfully, Squadcast has you covered with that. Uh, another thing that I like is the ability to record in high quality WAV files. The audio sounds really good from their recorder. I also like that you have the opportunity to mix the two tracks together or more, two, four, two, three or four tracks together. I like that. I think that's a helpful piece if you wanted to send it over to your guests just to review for reference. I wouldn't recommend that for post-production, but you can definitely check that out. Another thing I really like is that they've solved the audio drift issue that you see with Zencaster. With Zencaster, often you'll start recording and then over time, you or your guest track may end up being longer or shorter than the others. And so they end up not lining up and then you have talking over each other in post. So that can present a lot of issues and be really frustrating. It seems like Squadcast has solved that issue for the most part. I haven't noticed it. If you do have any issues with that, that is something that we can help with with the post-production piece with audio editing, mixing, and mastering. So again, thank you for taking the time to check out our tutorial and review of Squadcast for remote recording. If you have any questions, feel free to check out our website at resonaterecordings.com. We have a ton of great resources on our blog. You can check out other videos on our YouTube page, or you can feel free to reach out to us. If you have any questions about podcasting or you would like to explore seeing what it would look like for us to be a production partner for you, you can schedule a call with our team member and we would love to speak with you. So thanks again and happy podcasting.